All right, so should you live in Bali as a digital nomad? What are some of the things to consider? Well, I'm gonna kind of share what I know as I go along because I'm actually doing it and I'm in uh, day two of the process and I'm just moving all, selling, starting to sell all my stuff here and my place is a bit of a mess because I am um, selling it all on Facebook and it's quite freeing to sell all your stuff. If you've ever done it, it feels good to just, there's stuff that's been here for years I haven't even touched so I don't need any of it. It feels good. So that would be, now let's talk about the cost of Toronto versus Bali. Let's talk about um, the visas you need in Bali to, to work in Bali and what I found out so far. So let's talk about costs first. Well, this bachelor right now, by the way, I'm not selling this dog. This is a dog sitting for two weeks. So um, don't worry about the dog. It's all good. Now, the um, cost of this bachelor is around, is costing me 1800 Canadian. But that was two years ago. They haven't been able to raise the rent because of COVID. But now there's a new rule coming in. Blah, blah, blah. It's probably, you're probably looking for a bachelor now. If you move in fresh, you're looking around 2000 Canadian or that's about 1700 US. So let's talk US. And then to move to Bali, you can get a one bedroom apartment for about 650 US, apparently. So you're looking at a difference of, you know, um, a thousand dollars, maybe just under a thousand dollars, maybe like, 900 US. Then food. Food is around $100 a month US in Bali. In here, I'm paying around 400 to 500 US for food. So it's a, food is the inflation of food over the last few months, especially, is just skyrocketed. So all in all, I'm going to save about 1500 a month, which is about $18,000 a year, roughly, give or take. And now, so that's the, so that's why the main reason I'm moving is just inflation is insane. Now let's talk about the visas. Um, when you arrive to Bali, you can buy a visa for up to 60 days and then you have to leave and then you can come back the next day. When you arrive at the airport, you need to make sure that you have a, um, a return, like a ticket showing that you're leaving the country. You can't arrive with a single one-way ticket. You have to show the authorities that you're leaving. Um, now, to get a longer visa, there's something called a digital nomad visa. It's a five-year visa. That... To, you need to get sponsored for. So you'd either get sponsored by someone who lives there or you are marry someone there or you uh, get sponsored by someone, by company that actually is located in Bali. And then what I'm going to do, my personal plan is I'm going to get to Bali, find out what my options are. If after 60 days I have to leave, that's fine. I'll either go somewhere else. Maybe I have Thailand on the list. I have Lisbon, Portugal. I have Costa Rica, Ecuador and a few other places, maybe Turkey. So I'm probably going to stay at two months in each place, or maybe I'll, if I really like Bali, I'll just go to Thailand and come back. So there's all kinds of options. So that's why we're at stage I'm at so far. There's a really good guy I follow, teaches a lot, and he's a good resource. He can teach him more. His name's Lost LeBlanc. That's his channel name. You can go right there and check it out. All right.